there a better tone than a crank plexi? Well, probably not, right? This is my 1983, 1987 circuit, JCM800, right? And you've seen this amp featured before when I did a video on the restoration of this amp after I picked it up second hand and then converted it into pretty much an EVH spec plexi, albeit in 50 watt mode. Well, today we're exploring this amp a little bit further and I brought it back to standard voltage because last time you saw me play this amp, I'd actually biased it in and set it using a Variac down um, at 180 volts AC from my normal 240 volt AC supply here in Australia, which if you're in the US would be like setting your wall voltage at 90 volts, which is as Eddie would have it, right? So I've actually brought the amp back to 240 standard and rebiased it in at, and rebiased it in at that level. And today we're exploring the impact of filtering and in particular what difference the screen filter cap makes. Right? So when it comes to fil the filter caps in your amp, they all have a role to play, but I think from experimentation and research that the filter cap on the screen supply for your power tubes probably has the biggest impact in terms of the feel of the amp. So we are going to do an A-B test as I normally do, right? I have played a riff into the looper on my Axe FX in the rack here. And I've recorded that loop into the, this Marshall with a 50 microfarad screen filter cap. I've gone out to the bench. I've changed that filter cap to a 16 microfarad, 1.6. Okay, brought the amp back in here, played the same loop through it and recorded it. And I've also kind of just played through the amp from a field perspective, right? When we take the amp to the bench, I'm gonna take a range of measurements with my multimeter and my oscilloscope. And with those measurements, we will explore what is happening in this amp when we change the screen filter cap. Stick around. to the kind of the feel of the amp, which is a really hard thing to demonstrate. Obviously on YouTube, you've got to kind of play the amp to feel it, right? And you got you get that feeling and that feedback that kind of comes through. You, you know what I'm talking about, right? I played the amp a lot with the 50 microfarad on the screen supply there. And over the day today, I've been playing with this thing with the 16 in there. And it definitely feels different, right? It's got, a, it's more chewy and it's more greasy. It's not quite as snappy as it was, but you know, a plexi is a bit of a beast, right? And just lowering the filtering on the screens just makes it a little bit more forgiving and um, a little bit more fun to play when it's cranked. <laughs> sound of rock and roll. So to examine filtering, I'm using this schematic for a 50 watt Plexi 1987 model. This has come from the Martrans website. This is actually, someone's drawn this for a 1968 Plexi. Um, so it's a pretty interesting scheme, right? If you haven't been to this website, go and check it out. 
and there's a fantastic AMP archives uh, section there where they've got, you know, things documented and you can look at all the different kind of specs for marshals across the those early years. It's pretty fascinating. So what we want to show here is just the main filter caps as it relates to the schematic. Okay, this is the power transformer. Okay, here's our rectifier diodes coming from this is the high voltage secondary wind from the power transformer. All right, and after it passes through the fuse, the standby switch, here's our mains filter caps. And it's 240 microfarads in parallel, right? This is 80. I mean, this is a 1968 amp, right? So Marshall, not long after this, moved this to 50 plus 50, making this 100 microfarad, right? This is the ground line. This guy at the bottom here, so this is chassis ground. Okay. This is a two-phase rectifier setup. So it's rectifying your AC voltage. Okay, and then the mains cap here, uh, the main setup here is filtering that to create pretty much ripple-free DC. It won't be ripple-free. You'll still have a small ripple here at this point. Um, but if we trace this up here, right, output transformer, output transformer center tap on the primary side, this is how the plates of your power tubes get their high voltage. So in my 1987 model JCM 800, this is 445 volts DC and that's going onto the plates of the power tubes via the primary of this output transformer. So, so far so good. If there's a bit of ripple on here, which there will be, right, less than 5%, um, it doesn't really matter at this point because in a push-pull amp like this, that hum will be cancelled out. So it doesn't matter, right? So. The ripple on the B plus line, as we trace it through, here it is, all the way through to the preamp, it gets more and more and more important that as we go along, it gets less and less and less ripple to the point where in the preamp, you want basically none, right? Otherwise, you will get hum. And the reason you get hum through your amp that's audible through the speaker is that if there's hum on this B plus line, Right, then that will develop a voltage across this plate resistor. I have a video, a separate video on plate resistors if you want to understand what their role is. If you get a voltage that gets created across this plate resistor because you've got a hum on here, then that hum will be amplified, sent through your coupling cap and into your signal path and off you go. And it'll get amplified through the amp and then out through your speaker. No good. Let's get back to where we were. Right, so mains filter caps. Through the choke, I've got a video on chokes as well, so if you want to really want, want to understand what the role of the choke is, check that video out. So here's really what I want to talk about, which is the screen supply node. Okay, so after the choke, here we come down here for the screens. This is the screen supply, screen grid, and screen grid, right? And this 40 microfarad here in this 1968 50 watt plexi is the filter cap for the screen supply. Now, Marshall moved this to 50 microfarad in the 50 watt amp not long after this in, in the early 70s. And it's this filter cap here that we're really playing with in this video, right? So we're going to, um, you know, we're trying the 50 which is in the amp before I just changed it, and then we're moving this down to 16, all right, 16 microfarad. Another way to think of the filter network in your tube amp is as I've drawn it here. This is one of my schematics, right, which is, this is actually my power supply setup for uh, my Marshall ST1 style project board. Right, so if you're building a, 
an 800, 2203, 2204, or a 1959, 1987 100 watt or 50 watt plexi, then this board would be the one that you would use, but pretty standard. And what we see here is power transformer um, rectifier diodes here. These are these would be connected to these secondaries here. Um, the reason I don't have those connected on the schematic is because on these boards, I set these up so you can do either full wave rectification or two phase. In other words, you could do a 100 watt build or a 50 watt build. So don't worry about that. This is our mains filter. Two 200s in series is 100 microfarad. Okay, these 220K resistors here are simply, their role is to make sure that the voltage is equally shared between these two capacitors in series. Here's our choke. This is the screen supply. And all I really want to show on this, you know, in this schematic is just to kind of look at the power supply line separate from the rest of the amp. And you can see that the B plus line just cascades. It's a single supply line that goes all the way down to the preamp, right? So this is the supply node for V1, supply node for V2, for V3 or the phase inverter, screen supply, and the mains filter cap, right? And what I want you to pay attention to here is simply this configuration where you've got resistors and caps to ground, resistors and a cap to ground, and a resistor and a cap to ground. It's a low pass filter. All right, this is ripped straight off the internet. Now, you probably know that the job of a filter cap in, a, in an electrolytic cap like this, all right, these guys, they're like a reservoir, right? So they hold, um, they can store charge and they can release it, right? And their job is to eliminate the ripple in the supply line, um, which comes from originally from the rectified DC. Now, they're a reservoir, absolutely, right? But acting like this, what we actually have is a low pass filter network right so resistors and cap caps to ground you get dc is allowed to um, flow through and your ac signals are shunted to ground so to calculate the cutoff frequency right in a low pass filter setup like this i'm going to use my calculator here on screen and we're going to use this formula which is the frequency at cutoff is one over two pi times the resistance times the capacitance, right? So let's use um, let's use thirty two microfarad. Imagine this is a preamp node, right? So let's do thirty two microfarad on the cap, and we'll do ten k on the resistor. So I'm going to get my capacitance into this equation first. So First thing I'm doing here is getting micro, right? So that's 10 to the minus 6, which is micro. Multiply that by 32, all right? Multiply that by the resistance, which is 10K, all right? 0.32. Multiply that by pi. Okay. Multiply that by two, and it's one over. Right, so the frequency cutoff in our low pass filter here is 0.5 of a hertz. All right, I mean, you might as well call it DC. All right, this is why, you know, with a relatively highish resistance, 10K and a massive 32 microfarad in your amp is able to shunt everything above 0.5 of a hertz to ground, right? So it makes your 
B plus line here, super, super smooth. <laughs> We're going to have a look at what's going on with the screen supply node here. So my little test setup, what I've got is my meter here is on DC, right? And it's attached to the screen supply node. I've got 443, let's call it 444 volts DC sitting there at idle, right? The amps turned on and powered up, but no signal coming in at the moment. I've got a test signal. So there is a signal coming in, I should say, but the volume is on zero. Okay, so the amp's not uh, working. So this is a 150 millivolt peak to peak sine wave, and it's being generated from my scope here. And on the scope, what we've got is the probe set um, also on the screen supply node, okay? And I've got it DC coupled because it's this way I can actually demonstrate what's going on with the screen supply when I run a signal through it, right? We're running the amp into an 8 ohm resistive load. You'll hear when I turn the volume up, you'll actually hear the output transformer make a noise. Right, so here we go. Screen supply. That's all the way on, right? So that's just sagging. What we're seeing here is voltage sag. Okay, see the amp equalize again. Back to idle. Now pulse it. Right? Now I've got a, a 4N7 bright cap on this plexi. So you just crack the volume and it's pretty much at full, it's at full noise, right? So I'm just... You can see I'm oscillating that. So that's a bit like, imagine you're hitting, you've got your amp cranked and you just whack it with a big guitar chord. All right, this is the sag. It's interesting, isn't it? You can see it on the scope like this. That's screen supply sag. This is with 50 microfarad, all right? So, we're going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap this 50 out for a 16 and we're going to run that loop through it and we're going to see whether there's a, you know, what kind of tonal difference there is. Obviously play the amp as well to check for feel differences. But in terms of the measurements here, what I want to, what I want to see is whether um, there's any noticeable difference or, or observable difference with respect to the voltage sag. So let me just run this on and you can see 382. Okay, this is on 10. 382 is where it just sits. <laughs> We have now got the 16 by 16 microfarad cap in here. Okay, the amps back up. I've brought this up gradually, and we're going to repeat the exact same test. So the conditions are, are identical. I've got 240 volts on the mains. Here's my screen supply node voltage, and you can see on the scope I am measuring um, the waveform, the DC supply waveform at that screen supply node. So let's crank this volume. All right, so on full noise, 382, it's the same. 
Okay, kind of not surprising. I see the amp come back again. And I'm gonna pulse it now and we'll see with respect to the waveform on here, whether there's any observable difference. All right, now this is pretty interesting. What I've got here are two screen grabs from the footage of the oscilloscope. This one at the top here right, is the 50 microfarad screen. And remember what I was showing here, of course, was the voltage drop or voltage variation on the screen supply node. Bottom one here is 16. Now there's two things I want to highlight here, right? I've tried to line these up. So this is when the amp is at steady state with no signal, right? And when I turn the volume up, we had the voltage sag, right? So this is the voltage on the y-axis here and you know, time on the x-axis. So when I turn the volume up, the voltage sags and it drops and it comes back up just a little bit and then sits there until I wind the volume back to zero and then it recovers. Okay, here's the same thing happening on the 16 microfarad screen supply. Number one, look at the gradient on these lines compared to this one, right? So this is the fall off. So at that point is when I turn the amp up, turn the amp up on full and then this is the voltage drop and it's coming down at an angle here, right? It's pretty quick, but look at the difference. 16, it just drops nearly vertical, not quite, but nearly vertical. This is far more kind of gentle by comparison, right? So that's a reflective of the 50 microfarad caps got, it's a deeper reservoir. You know, you've got more charge there to drain. So this impacts the feel of the amp, right? The sag here takes longer. This one here, you feel the sag, you know, it's more quick, right? You, you feel it more quickly. Second thing to point out is let's have a look at what happens with the, the drops on each of these, right? So drops comes back a little bit. I turn the volume off. It recovers back to the steady state at idle and when it recovers you know it's pretty pretty clean there yeah there's a bit of a jag there see it bounces comes back up again and look at with 16 microfarad steady state drops comes back up and then when it recovers there's also look at that all right it doesn't appear here. So there's a kind of like a recovery um, ripple, is what I'll call it, recovery ripple on the screen supply here. And when I did the volume off and on really fast, you could see that this becomes, it's kind of more accentuated, I guess, because it hasn't had time to really kind of level out. But yeah, interesting observation, I think, on the scope here. <laughs> That's it for today guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and learning about filter caps. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then please do and you'll be notified of new content. I'll catch you later.